Uh, in terms of just the beginning or starting point, you know, we talk about having a theory of second language acquisition or basically a philosophy of how people learn language. What's the best way and what's the best way to learn a language? And we have a lot of classroom practices that we're familiar with that all of us have experienced when we've studied foreign languages before. Most teachers of ESL were usually very interested in studying foreign languages themselves, and that's kind of what got them into the field. But we all kind of have this image in our mind of what the language learning classroom, second language learning classroom looks like. And But if you back that up into that the teacher had some kind of method to the madness, and then a theory, which means, you know, research behind all of these activities, research as to how the brain learns a language, how we remember things, and how we store two different languages in our brain, our first language and then this foreign language, then, uh, then there, ha there have to be theories behind all this, research-based, and that's what we want to look at, you know, in a course like this. And then the theory of how people learn foreign languages or second languages uh, works its way into different methods, which is a little more specific as a course actually gets designed where you have these methods, and then that leads to classroom activities. So you kind of hear the uh, approach design procedure description, which is theory, method, activities. Approach is another way to say theories. A little looser feeling, you know, like approach sounds a little looser than like theory, but it's the same concept. And then design is a, a good synonym, I think, for having a method and then procedure. And so we want to make sure that, you know, whatever we do in the classroom, it's, it's not like every activity we really know the research behind it. A lot of it's intuitive and just something that we were trained in feeling like this will work. But, you know, if the students question what you're doing or if parents of younger students question you or if it's school administration questions what you're doing in the classroom, it's nice to say, you know, that you've done your homework and according to research, you know, people learn by communicating or having real communication or collaborating with others, having tasks, meaningful tasks, and, you know, always trying to get away from the real memorization and drills over and over again, kind of behavioristic model of, of learning, which a lot of traditional cultures still have that memorization method just in general for learning. So... Sometimes they think these communicative teaching methods for ESL are not really founded in what's really going to work. And so we want to really have that background. You know, the, uh, the classroom is, there's so many uh, different types of situations because the students could be children, they could be teenagers, they could be adults. Uh, the students might be in their home country taking an EFL class. They might be immigrants. And they might be learning English for different motivations, like just for college or the job, or maybe uh, uh, maybe they want to travel or something like that. So the students have different ages, motivations. Also, English classes have such different schedules. For example, you might take an English class uh, intensively so that every day you're studying a few hours, four or five hours a day, especially if you're living abroad. Or it might just be one of your classes in high school that you visit once a week, and it's just one of the many classes you're taking. So there's real, very different considerations in terms of the country you're in, motivation, the age, that, that tie into you know, how this course, is, this English class is gonna be developed, you know, that you're putting together. And then that leads to another point of the different activities you're doing in the classroom, like teacher-centered classroom, where the teacher's lecturing and giving information, or like a student-centered classroom, where the students are working, you know, in groups a lot. And uh, the, such a different type of classroom, and not to mention, you know, presentations that the students will be putting together, group presentations, you know, field trips, or maybe during some sort of scavenger hunt outside the classroom. 
So it allows a lot of that flexibility. In addition to uh, what can they do for homework? What can they do on their computer? Uh, do they have language laboratories and computer laboratories? So uh, in terms of how the student can use, can use his or her free time, that's another thing we kind of want to set them up for in this situation. So that's kind of the general approach to what we're trying to do here as we you know, consider all these things.